up everyone pilot Pete back with another airline pilot trip and this one is a fantastic one for me it's not too long uh, it pays pretty freaking well and since it's not that long I probably won't have that much like behind the scenes details to show I figured hey perfect op opportunity to answer a lot of the questions I do get asked online and in my comments and my DMS and this way we can kind of show you also one kind of full trip in the day in the life of an airline pilot so the reason this trip is so good is this is a perfect example of block hours versus credit hours. What that means, block hours is what the actual pilot is flying the trip. So I only block about 2.5 hours of physical flight time. So I'll be flying the airplane physically for about two and a half hours. However, this trip, brace yourself, I'm gonna be crediting 43 hours of pay. I know that sounds ridiculous and crazy. How are you only flying two and a half hours but getting paid for 43? Well, the company actually did make a mistake. The trip was built to be a long layover with a bunch of different legs and a bunch of different flying. However, they realized, hey, we only need to move the airplane from Seattle to Denver. However, when I was awarded the trip, I was awarded with all these different legs. So they shrunk the footprint of the trip to only basically one day of flying. But since I was already guaranteed that trip and that pay, they have to honor the higher of the two. So I'm crediting 43 hours of pay, but I'm only flying about two, two and a half hours. So the trip itself is a deadhead out to Seattle. I'm gonna be catching a company jump seat from Newark to Seattle. Fingers crossed that the MD-11 that I'm flying on has a little sleeper area for me to take a nap, chill and watch some movies on the way out there. Uh, and then tomorrow, early, early morning in Seattle, I operate Seattle to Denver. And that's where the trip ends. It ends with a deadhead back to my base. I'm gonna deviate from there and catch a flight either to LaGuardia or Newark and uh, get home. So yeah, this trip is very lucrative for me, which I'm obviously stoked about and not that much flying. So a lot of deadheading. And for me personally, I'd much rather be paid the same rate as I would physically flying the airplane, but wearing comfortable clothes, watching movies, eating, snacking, sleeping, and having to fly. So that's the difference between credit hours and block hours. So here a lot of pilots talk about, hey, I only flew 300 hours this year, but I credited a thousand hours. Well, there's premium pay, there's overtime, there's deadheading, and then there's like trip guarantee. So that's another one where if the pilot flies, say, New York to Atlanta, two hour flight, but the company guarantees them five or six hours of pay per day, doesn't matter how short the flight is, they're still gonna make that money. So uh, yeah, I hope that explained a little bit between the difference between block and credit hours. And like I said, in New York right now, heading out, I'm gonna grab a deli sandwich, an Uber, it's pouring rain, so hopefully the Uber prices aren't too expensive and then uh, company jump seats from uh, Newark to Seattle. So if you wanna come along for the ride as always, let's go do it. So we get uh, in Newark, since I'm gonna be jump seating out of Newark, we get uh, crew rides out to the airplane. So it is pouring rain as you can probably see in Newark, it's freaking nasty out. So I'm getting a ride over, so I keep the hair a little dry and uh, planes all loaded up, MD-11. A six hour flight to Seattle, and I'm not sure what the sleeping quarters are gonna be just yet because I haven't gotten on the plane, obviously. But getting dropped off now, I'm gonna check out the flight crew, make sure it's okay, I catch a ride, and we'll hopefully, like I said, fingers crossed, I got a little sort of bedding so I can take a nap on the six hour flight. Let's go check it out. All right, we made it to the jump seat, we're almost ready to go. I lucked out, no sleeper, but. This will be my ride for the next six and a half hours. Kind of big business, kind of looking class seats. Got a little pillow, these seats, there's extra seats if you needed them. And then the flight deck's just right in there. 
but before he came in Newark, I'm freaking soaked. Uh, we should be out of here in the next like 10 minutes or so. But basically how it works is I just sign up online for the jump seat. Uh, it's ultimately the captain's discretion on whether or not we'll have, or have a ride. So uh, he said no problem. And I met the FO, the captain, super nice guys. I'll be back here, like I said, just eating my lunch, watching some movies, hopefully being able to fall asleep. And uh, next stop will be Seattle, Washington. <laughs> Halfway through the flight, three hours down, three to go. I've been eating, watching some Netflix, and uh, now it's time to move the body, folks. It's non-negotiable. Nobody know that, so we got our little gym set up. I put down some little towel things, can do some stretching and uh, some push-ups, maybe a little couple sit-ups because, like I said, it's non-negotiable. Everyone's talking about they don't have time. I gotta do this, I gotta do that. I'm up at freaking 38,000 feet in a little freaking flying 600 miles an hour can across the country, and I'm making it work. I'm getting it in, non negotiable folks, and moving that body every day. Let's go. Just landed in Seattle, Washington, six and a half hours later, we made it. SeaTac Airport right behind me. I do gotta say though, beautiful day. Beautiful freaking day in Seattle. Much nicer than, than it was back in New York. I gotta say though, one of the annoying parts about getting around is we don't land at the normal passenger terminals. So getting an Uber is always just a pain in the butt, especially with the app. It won't let you like select usually where you're at. It's a whole mess. So I've been out here for like 10, 15 minutes already waiting for my Uber to try to figure out where the heck I am. I don't know where the heck I am, but we're gonna get there eventually. And uh, like I said, I got about uh, six hours now before I go to bed because wake up's at 3 a.m. tomorrow local time. So I'm gonna grab some dinner, check out my hotel, and uh, won't be too long before bedtime. All right, I gotta show you this freaking room I got. It's pretty sick. So you walk in, Nice and big, you got your little dining room, full kind of bar area, separate living room with a big TV. I haven't even been in here yet. The master suite, another TV, freaking little office area, big shower and tub. There's two showers. I don't know, that's gonna be the toilet. So toilets in there, double sink, tub, and shower, but best part, check this out. Let's freaking go, people. Terrace, look at this, dude. Let's go. Let's freaking go over Lake Washington. Seattle in the background. Unfortunately, I'm only here for a couple of hours so i'm not going to be able to enjoy it too much but not too shabby upgraded and they probably were like yo pilot pete's coming to town it's vlogging the trip let's hook him up so i'm going to chain into the gym attire because that workout in the jump seat of the md let's be honest wasn't really real as far as getting a good workout in so i'm going to quick change arms downstairs quick 30 minutes nothing crazy maybe some abs grab some dinner and then uh, bedtime, so I said 3 a.m. wake up. So let's go get it. Iron in the uniform real quick for tomorrow morning. I seriously cannot get over how nice this freaking room is. My only regret is that I'm not here longer. Like the view, the freaking, I'll show you guys. I just noticed it when I went out further onto the balcony, the freaking Boeing, not factory, but it's like their other Boeing assembly line, I guess. I don't know what it's called. Someone out here will know better than me, but. Um, is right, I can like see the planes. It's freaking sick. Shameless plug, but honestly, they are the best flight uniforms. Literally, they're called flight uniforms. Um, I wear them for every trip. My uh, 
code will be on the bottom if you want to save some money. A bunch of my friends who are also pilots wear them. And my favorite part about them is they're super, super lightweight. So if you're looking for a thick material to stay warmer, these definitely aren't it. Um, but if you're looking for something super lightweight, stretchy. All right, we'll answer this quick few questions. The top one that I get all the time is flight training. Where should you go? Do the airlines care if it's at ATP or if it's mom and pop part 141, 161? The answer I always give people is the same. No, it doesn't matter. Airlines don't care where you got your flight training from. They just want to see that you have the hours, the ratings. Hopefully you don't have any failed check rides or if you do, you don't have a lot of them. They don't want to see a lot of failures. And then part 141, part 61 does not matter. Pick the flight school and the training program that fits your lifestyle the best. So if flying out to Arizona and living in Scottsdale for six months and getting all your ratings fits what you need and want to accomplish, do it. But don't think you need to get everything done in six months if you want to work your full-time job, but then also flight train at your local flight school in New Jersey or Pennsylvania or wherever the heck you live, do that. Don't think that one flight school is better than the other. Because at the end of the day, airlines are gonna hire people that have the requirements in order to fill the position. Is blank too old to start flight training to become a pilot? The answer is no. I don't care if you're 22 or if you're 62. It really isn't too old. Granted, you can only be an airline pilot up to the age of 65. So if you are 62, you probably won't ever fly for the airlines, but you can still fly corporate. You can still become a flight instructor. You can still tow banners. Um, fly private jets, things of that nature. So I always tell people it's never too late, but commonly I get asked people in their 30s, even early 40s, like, hey, I'm in my 40s, is it too late to become an airline pilot? And the answer is no, because the way you do the math, if you work hard enough, three to five years you'll be at the airlines, so that if you start at 40, conservatively you're five years at the airlines, two years at a regional potentially, you're hired at 47, 48 maybe at a major airline, could be a lot sooner, um, could be later, but could be a lot sooner. So say you get hired at 50, that gives you 15 years at the airline making six figures. So, you know, yeah, are you gonna upgrade to a wide body captain? Probably not at that airline, but are you gonna still have a decent career 15 years? I would say, yeah. Um, and my whole thing is this, and I get it, it's a lot easier said than done for a lot of people with families and financial situations, but, What's the point of living on this earth for literally one nanosecond as far as the universe is concerned and not doing what you wanna do, right? Like, go for it, go for it. You wanna be an airline pilot, I'm telling you it's not hard. Um, it takes a lot of work, you gotta study, you gotta go for it, but anyone can do it. So if you really, really, really wanna do it, I don't care what your age is, um, go for it. That's what I always tell people. And yeah, again, I get it easier said than done for a lot of people, but follow your dream. Follow the dream, baby. Go big or go home. And then third question I get asked a lot is now, as in March of 2024, a good time to become an airline pilot. No one has the answer for you. It's impossible to know if the airlines are going to keep hiring like they're hiring or if an economy is going to stop and they're not going to hire for 10 plus years. It's, um, the last comment I made about just going for it, you, you have no idea what the future holds. It's impossible to know what industry is going to be there tomorrow, um, in the future. So if it's something that you're passionate about and you like it, don't worry about, you know, people I hear, oh, robots will be flying airplanes, this, that, the other. That could be absolutely correct. And if that's the case, then I'll pivot somehow and I'll find another way to make a living. But right now, being an airline pilot is my favorite thing. I love the job. I love the uniqueness of it. I love the travel. Um, are there cons to it? Absolutely. Um, but if it's something that you've always wanted to do, go for it. Don't look back. So, all right, those are three questions. You gotta get more question and, question and answers. So if you have any questions, as always, throw a comment below on the video. I'd appreciate it. I'll get to them all, answer them in the next video. And it's time to go work out. I think the uniform looks good enough. What do you think? What do you think, people? I gotta admit, I'm in my 30s, and even when I'm going to this day to like weddings and stuff, my number one iron person is my mother. She's a fantastic mom. Hopefully you're gonna watch this video because I could use the watch and the subscribe and the thumbs up from you. Um, but she does a really good job. I stink at it, but you gotta do what you gotta do, so. All right, enough blabbling. Gym, quick workout, dinner, let's go. So my private little terrace brings me out into this bigger terrace overlooking the lake, which is sick. But I said I'd show you guys 
Look at that. So that's Ren Renton Airport in Seattle. And those are the Boeing 37s, Boeing 737s. You can see the wingtips. I'm gonna guess that's uh, Southwest, Alaska. Allegiant getting some 7.3s maybe, and then United in the back. So I don't know exactly what they do there. If they just paint them, if they, someone on here I'm sure will know, but more tails in the back, but pretty cool that my little terrace kind of overlooks it. So definitely got the hookup today. Again, just kind of a bummer that I'm only here for a couple hours because it'd be sick to spend like a full day here or a couple days obviously to have all this room. It's almost like I want to invite people over, but I don't know how many friends uh, in, in, Lake, in Lake Washington in Seattle at the present moment. So uh, I'm going to do a quick workout and then dinner time. I want to show you guys that before it got too dark. Pretty freaking cool, man. Pretty freaking cool. Here's the gym and the hotel. Also pretty freaking sweet. Got plenty of equipment. All the machines you could want. Dumbbells are pretty short though. Probably up to 50, but tons of bikes, tons of room. Again, great view. Just a little bum that I won't be here long enough to really use all of this. So I'm just gonna get a quick workout in. Like I said, arms, no more than 30 minutes because I really gotta find some dinner and then get to bed. Quick dinner, found this Thai place near my hotel. And I'm hammering down some steak and rice and veggies. Let's go. Review coming soon, I'll let you know how it is. Papaya Vietnamese Cafe, 9.4 to 10. Excellent all the way around. So now I'm gonna run to the local Target, grab some breakfast for tomorrow, cause 3 a.m. nothing's gonna be open and then it's bedtime because it's gonna be early morning. So that one leg, that's all we gotta think about though, just one leg, Seattle to Denver tomorrow morning. So let's look at that quick. Good morning, beautiful people from Seattle, Washington, bright and early, but I'm on East Coast time, so at least my body clock feels like that. So not too early, 6.30, I guess, local time. Got a good, decent amount of sleep, and now it is time to go to work, checking out of my palace of a hotel. And we got about a 20 minute van ride over to SeaTac International Airport. And I uh, haven't met with the captain yet. He's downstairs in the lobby, I'm sure. And it'll be, uh, I'm not sure who's gonna be flying. Probably his, we only have one flight of the day. Captain usually like to take the first one, but sometimes they ask, it really all depends on the captain. And then uh, once we get to Denver, it's a deadhead, we're done. Um, so kind of like I was explaining earlier when I was back in my apartment, um, this trip I'm actually is very, very lucrative for me in the sense of I'm only flying one leg where I'm getting paid for almost like four and a half, five days. So cannot beat that. I got a scheduled flight out of the passenger terminal um, like two hours after we land. Planning on taking that, we're gonna see how we feel. Like, I'm way too tired. Um, I do have a hotel in Denver and a free ride there to go crash, catch up some sleep and then fly back to New York. There's really no rush um, to get back to my apartment, but that's the game plan. Two and a half hours, I think it is to Denver. And then, like I said, a little layover and then we'll take, uh, not PDLA flats, unfortunately, we'll just take a passenger carrier back to uh, LaGuardia, I think is scheduled right now. So, uh, all right, let's go get it. I'll see you on the ramp in Denver. Good morning from the ramp in Seattle, Washington. Bright and early, minus the bright, so pretty dark out. A little chilly in the 40s, but uh, feeling good, rested. The captain's leg to fly us over to Denver, and I'll be pilot monitoring just over two hours. Got a bunch of fuel, weather's pretty good, a little bit of weather in route, but nothing too bad. 
and uh, plane is pretty much ready to go. So pre-flight is good, feeling good, and two hours to Denver. Looking forward to getting there so I can be done. One and done, baby. That's what we like to do. Just landed in Denver, Colorado. Nice, easy flight. Uh, just a little bumpy coming over the uh, Rocky Mountains, which is per usual coming from the, the west. We landed runway 35 left in Denver's captain's leg, like I mentioned. He did a pretty good job. Uh, VFR here, no real clouds, no snow yet. It is cold, it's like 34 degrees uh, in Denver, but quiet. Still pretty early, I guess, for all the departures and arrivals. Because Denver's usually really freaking busy, um, but flew pretty much close to downtown, as you'd see in the video there, uh, just to the uh, east of downtown Denver, and then over Centennial Airport before we turned base to final and landed on the runway. Trip's over. Ends with a deadhead. So uh, Catherine's headed to the hotel. Um, I am not. I'm going to take a little nap here in our little lounge area as you can see a couple of sleepers and then I am going to catch a commercial flight from Denver direct to LaGuardia and that flight's not till uh, like three hours from now so I'm gonna change out of this into the comfy clothes close my eyes for a little bit because 3 a.m. wake up came way too early and then uh, we'll dead head home so a couple hours here and uh, we'll be on our way made it on to our Light got 18A, nice exit row window, extra leg room for my six four legs. Not snowing in Denver yet. Next stop is LaGuardia. Just landed back in New York. That's all she wrote for the trip. Curious, when you guys are flying anything over like an hour, two hours, three hours, whatever it is on a commercial flight, are you sitting down the entire time and you getting up? I personally, I'm not sleeping. I did sleep for the first hour, but then I set my alarm for like 45 minutes and then every 45 minutes I get up and walk the aisle. I stretch back in the galley where the flight attendants are usually chitter chatter a little bit but I gotta move my legs or I feel like I get stiff and my legs and my hips get all tight and stuff like that so a little recommendation from a pilot himself who's constantly flying uh, I know it can get kind of tiring and almost be bad on the body to sit there for that long so that's a little tip I do is 45 minutes I get up you know I don't use the bathroom I just walk the walk the, uh, the plane and, and hang back in the galley probably not flight attendant's favorite is passenger doing that, but gotta do what you gotta do to stay healthy. So 
Anyway, as always, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. I know this was a short one, deadhead there, deadhead back, but uh, very, very lucrative for me. Like I said, I explained the difference between block hours and credit hours. So I'm crediting about 43 hours of pay for just there and back. I've only gone for pretty much one full day. So Sunday, got a little bit of sunlight left. It's gonna go home, probably cook myself a steak. Uh, I got to church a little bit later, and then uh, we'll be uh, back to work the following week. So another vlog coming soon. But comments, questions below, and uh, as always, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.